blessed and pleasant good morning my brothers and sisters in Christ and welcome to morning prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize today is a beautiful Thursday morning and it is the 18th day of February my goodness more than half of February gone already it's just amazing how quickly time is going by I do pray you had a blessed Ash Wednesday yesterday and we're gonna continue and kick off this morning with one entitled, Awake My Soul and With the Sun. Let's have a listen. I find that any hymn that ends with a doxology is a hymn that makes me feel completely alive. We are going to continue by getting our words here up on screen 
for today, February the 18th, and with God's grace, there will be no technological issues today. And there we go. <laughs> we continue with our opening sentence from the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 13. Rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and repents of evil. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, we are on page 35. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Our invitatory prayer. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is canticle number eight, The Song of Moses based on Exodus chapter 15, verses 1 through to 6, 11 through to 13, and 17 through to 18. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my savior. This is my God, and I will praise him. The God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you? Glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders. You stretched forth your right hand, and the earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. With your might, you brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession. The resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord. The sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. At this time, we pause to call to mind briefly those things that, in thought, word, or deed, we would have committed, that would have been displeasing to God, that would have been unjust to our neighbors, or that would have been unfair to our very selves. For those times and those moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of us. Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, we have our psalm for today, and our psalm is Psalm number 37, and reading the psalm for us this morning is Miss Consuelo Rosado. Let's have a listen. Good morning. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 37, 1 through 18. Don't worry about the wicked. Don't envy those who do wrong. For like grass, they soon fade away. Like springtime flowers, they soon wither. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desire. 
Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust Him and He will help you. He will make your innocence as clear as the dawn, and the justice of your cause will shine like the noonday sun. Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for Him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. Stop your anger. Turn from your rage. Do not envy others. It only leads to harm. For the wicked will be destroyed, but those who trust in the Lord will possess the land. In a little while, the wicked will disappear. Do you look for them? They will be gone. Those who are gentle and lowly will possess the land. They will live in prosperous security. The wicked plots against the godly. They snarl at them in defiance. But the Lord just laughs, for he sees the day of judgment coming. The wicked draws their sword and string their bows to kill the poor and the oppressed, to slaughter those who do right. But they will be stabbed through the hearts with their own swords, and their bows will be broken. It is better to be godly and have little than to be evil and possess much. For the strength of the wicked will be shattered, but the Lord takes care of the godly. Day by day the Lord takes care of the innocent, and they will receive a reward that lasts forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. We want to thank Miss Consuelo for leading us in the reading of the psalm this morning. Our second canticle for this morning is canticle number 10, the second song of Isaiah, which is based on Isaiah 55, verse 6 through to 11. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion, and to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens, and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson for this morning is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 6 through to 11, and leading us in the reading this morning, is Mr. Javier Rosado. Let's have a listen. Good morning. Today's lesson is taken from the Old Testament's Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verses 6 to 11. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of the people on earth to be his people, his treasured possessions. It was not because you were more numerous than any other people that the Lord set his heart on you and chose you for you were the fewest of all peoples. It was because the Lord loved you and kept his, the oath that he swore to your ancestors that the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hands of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who maintains covenant loyalty with those who, keep, who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and who replace in their own person those who reject him he does not delay but repays in their own person those who reject him therefore observe diligently the commandments the statutes and the ordinance that i am commanding you today this is the word of the lord thanks be to god we want to thank Mr. Rosado for leading us in the readings. And of course, Ms. Consuelo and Mr. Javier are reading in honor of their mom, Miss Phyllis, who is celebrating a birthday today. Let's get our words back here up on screen then for Deuteronomy 7, 6 through to 11. And of course, while we would have strayed away from the reading from Deuteronomy, um, yesterday we looked at Joel because of course it was Ash Wednesday and the start of Lent 
but the day before we looked at Deuteronomy and we had talked about Deuteronomy chapter 6 in which Moses was remind, works reminding the people of Israel of the fact that there was a need for their obedience to Almighty God. He was reminding them of the covenant that God had made with them and the fact that the covenant passed down to their ancestors. And today in Deuteronomy 7, which is where we are, and it is kind of sad that we don't get to see verses 1 to 5, but Deuteronomy 7 is basically about the, pardon me, the commands to conquer and obey God. And it talks about the conquest of the Canaanites that was commanded by God. And I often wonder, God said to the people, I will take you out of slavery in Egypt and take you into a land flowing with milk and honey, which was the land of Cana. But it wasn't like the land of Cana was empty. The Canaanites lived there. And so what was commanded of the Israelites in order for them to not be defiled in their way of life and their religion, they were commanded to completely destroy the Canaanites and their culture. And now that seems a little bit harsh that God would command his people to eliminate an entire nation of people in order that they could take over their land. And oof, that, that's, that's, that's difficult. But even though Israel was not in the land as yet, Moses was instructing them based on what God was saying that it was their faithful promise from God that according to his principle, God would prepare them before they went into the place and he would strengthen them that they would be greater than the Canaanites and they would overpower the Canaanites and God would deliver them and they would take over the, the place. But the thing about it is that it was not just taking over. Something about the Canaanites must have been displeasing in the sight of God. Their altars, their sacred pillars, their wooden images, their carved images, everything. Now, these were not the people that were worshiping God, but they were to destroy anything and everything which would lead them as Israelites into the worship of false or foreign gods. It was very radical. It was the complete destruction of everything that would have been important to the Canaanites. But it this complete destruction would have been important because of the depraved nature of the worship of the Canaanites. They worship male and female gods of, of sex and they practice human sacrifice, even killing their own children as a part of human sacrifices to these false gods. And so it was necessary for the people of Israel to purge the land of all of this, is what the command of God was. Purge the land of all of this, that there would be nothing to dissuade you from worshiping me and why why would you need to do this and verse 6 in from our reading this morning tells us for you are a people holy to the lord your god the lord your god has chosen you out of all peoples on the earth to be his people and his treasured possessions so they must conquer the canaanites completely because of the love that the lord has for them and the lord out of this love wants them to be obedient he wants them to be faithful to him and so he is trying to eradicate and remove anything that would be a distraction that would cause them to not be fixed on serving god israel was holy in their standing before god before they were they were they were holy in their conduct yes they were set apart by god his chosen people and it means then that their their election was a symbol of God's love for them. So their motivation for such a total obedience was to know that they were loved by God. And it was not because, like it says in verse 7, not because they were more numerous than anybody else that God has set his heart on them. It was simply because he loved them. Yeah, He loved them and he was going to keep an oath that he swore to their ancestors. Remember, God had promised Abraham who had no children, and his wife Sarah, that their descendants would be as numerous as the stars in the sky. And to keep that oath of love that God had for the ancestors who were faithful, he was preparing this new generation of people to show them his love. And he had done it. He redeemed them from the house of slavery, from the hands of Pharaoh in Egypt. He loved them and he kept time and time again, showing them his love. But yet, time after time, they had turned away from him. You know? 
And now he is bringing them to this new place after delivering them. And he's telling them, you must conquer completely because the God you serve is a God of justice. And he repays those who hate him to their face. And the actions of the Canaanites was blatant disrespect to, the, to God. And so over many generations, the Canaanites had demonstrated disrespect, disloyalty, hatred towards God. And now God was going to use Israel as his instrument to repay them with the judgment that he felt they deserved. And after purging the land of these people that were disrespectful to God, the Israelites are commanded then to observe diligently the commandments and the statutes and the ordinances that he had given to them. And we know how this story ends. And it's a very short portion of scripture. And we know how the story ends. They will go in. They will overthrow the Canaanites. But what? They will become so proud and boastful in and of themselves that they will forget God and what will happen. They will turn away from him. And some will not even destroy the things of the Canaanites. Some will keep the things of the Canaanites and their hearts will be turned away from God to the same false worship that God has warned them about. And it's interesting when you think about it because God doesn't send us into a situation ill-prepared, you know. We might feel that we are ill-prepared to deal with a situation, but if we are walking into any circumstance with God, then we know that God is going to be with us. How is the phrase? The phrase goes like this. God doesn't always call the equipped, but he always equipped the call. Those whom he call, he will definitely make sure he sustains. And this as a measure of confidence should be what we go with. Not boldly feeling that we have it in control over ourselves, but going in knowing that we do not walk in it alone. God set he, he placed everything in the way it should have been for the Israelites. And these people's hearts just did not stay faithful to him. And you know, you know that it took 40 years to complete a 40-day journey because of disobedience, because of not adhering to the things of God. And I often wonder how long we prolong our struggle by not listening and doing the things that God is commanding us to do. How often will God not do for us in our lives? He, he does over and over. He renews, he refreshes, he removes instances that we, we should not be involved in. And he prepares a place for us. And he just simply asks that we love him with a slight measure of the love that he has for us. That we obey him and follow after his ways. And like the Israelites, many times we turn away and lent yesterday the, the litany of penitence that would have been done in Ash Wednesday services and the reminder of the fact that we are to be repentant and that we are supposed to strive to do our best to live lives that are pleasing to God. That is what the next 40 days should be about. That is what we should be focusing on. Remembering the mercies and the goodness that God has bestowed upon us. Remembering that as sinful beings, we are called to repent, turn away from our sins and seek after the things of God. Yesterday, um, in our drive by Ashes Giving, because we had services and then we had walkthroughs where you could just come and collect your ash. And I remember one young man saying, so Rev, what is it now that I have gotten my ash that makes me a good person, right? I'm, I'm, I'm holy. And I said, well, brother, you need to remember that the ash on your forehead is not a symbol of the fact that you are holy. It is a symbol of the fact that you are a sinner in need of God's mercy. And that is what we have to remember this Lent. That we indeed have done so much to turn away from God. Rejected him time and time again. And that those who reject him will know his judgment. And therefore, like the reading ends for today, we must observe diligently the commands, the statutes and the ordinances that God has commanded us to do. And strive to live lives that will be for him. And the truth is, if we try our best to be our best for 40 days of Lent. And we succeed. Then we could do it for the rest of our lives. Amen.
we will continue this morning with the profession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, we are on page 42. We profess our faith saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son of our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This morning we use for our prayers suffrage C, which can be found on page 44. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in you. During Lent, for the weekdays of Lent, we use the Call It for Ash Wednesday, which can be found on page 163. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, wordly lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A prayer for social justice. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving Spirit may so move every human heart that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we turn to offer our prayers of personal thanksgivings and intercessions to Almighty God. We would like to extend this morning birthday greetings to the following individuals. Mr. Benoit Koyi, Mrs. Phyllis Rosado, and the Reverend Craig Mayers from the Diocese of Jamaica. We pray, ladies and gentlemen, that you would have a blessed and beautiful birthday today and that indeed God's mercy and blessings continue to be with you, not just for today, but for all the remaining days of your life. Happy birthday! We continue to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. Miss Judith, Miss Ines, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Agnes, Miss Celine, Miss Agnes V, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, Miss Mildred, Miss Monica, Miss Eileen, Miss Des, Miss Sonia, Miss Grace, Miss Yolanda, Miss Daniela, Miss Beryl, Miss Janet, Miss Jessica, Miss Margaret, Miss Sylvia, Miss Janice, Miss Gertrude, Miss Justine, Miss Donna, Miss Soila, Miss Amelia, Miss Olga, Miss Marilyn, Miss Mary, Miss Harris, Miss Marva, 
Miss Ainslin, Miss Felicia, Miss Leslie, Miss Crystal, Miss Altia, Miss Anisetta, and Miss Sonia. We remember the following of our brothers in our prayer. Mr. Hilbert, Mr. Rudolph, Mr. Eliseo, Mr. Normando, Mr. Cecil, Mr. Larry, Mr. Finley, Mr. Rupert, Mr. Leon, Mr. Kenrick, Mr. Costa, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Ian, Mr. Alfred, Mr. James, Mr. William, Mr. Glenford, Mr. Michael Soberanis, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Anthony, Mr. Gary, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Zane, Mr. Dion, Mr. Damien, Mr. Patrick, Mr. Eugenio, and Mr. Dudley. We pray for our sick and shut-in members of our parish family, and I ask your prayers specifically for those of the Christ the King parish family. We pray for Mr. Eds, Miss Elva, Mr. Austin, Miss Amy, Mr. Alfonso, Miss Myrtle, Miss Gladys, Miss Ismay, and Miss Jean. We pray for those who care for the infirmed, praying for Miss Sonia, Miss Monica, and Miss Raquel. We continue to offer prayers of comfort for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We remember in our prayers the family of Miss Carmela Willoughby, the family of Mr. Rene Gordon, the Smith and August family as they grieve the loss of Miss Geraldine Smith. We pray for God's comfort and peace upon the family of Miss Codella Faye Thompson, who will be laid to rest on Friday. We continue to pray as well for Bishop Michael Maxwell and his sons as they prepare to lay Mrs. Dawn Holder Maxwell to rest on the 20th of February. We pray for God's comfort and peace to be upon the bereaved and we pray for eternal rest for those who have died. We continue to pray for protection for our loved ones who are far away from us. We remember our students, Tammy, Anwa, Karina, Courtney, Akua, and Ashley. We pray for our loved ones in the military, praying for Emil and Jade at this time. We pray for the enablement and protection of all medical professionals in the performance of their duties. Praying for Dr. Molina, Dr. Manzanero, Dr. Shogreen, Dr. Arana, and Dr. Joseph. We pray for Nurse McKean, Nurse Gill, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Orell, Nurse Joycelyn, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Aaron, and Nurse Alejandra. We pray for healing and comfort for persons who are infected with COVID-19. We pray for all those in the various isolation wards. We pray for a cure or vaccine for this disease. We pray for the containment and eventual elimination of this COVID-19. We pray for the combating of the economic fallout caused by this pandemic. We pray for industries most severely hit. We pray for persons who would have lost employment and those whose salaries would have been reduced. We pray for all who are struggling to make ends meet at this time. We remember and pray for the most vulnerable in our society, for the poor, the needy, the elderly, those with pre-existing health conditions. We remember and pray for our security forces, for the government, the opposition, and those in positions of public trust and authority. We pray for our churches and our church leadership. We remember and pray for the private sector and all non-governmental organizations who are involved in the fight against COVID-19. We remember and pray for the members of the international community who presently suffer as a result of COVID-19. And we continue to pray for God's protection over us and our region against the ravages of natural disaster, remembering those in the Texas and New York region who are experiencing severe cold weather at this time. For the prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God would hear our prayers.
we conclude our intercessions by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your law and the works of your commandment, that under your protection now and ever we may be preserved in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you all so much for joining us for morning prayer this morning. Um, it is indeed a blessing to be able to fellowship with you early in the morning. I want to thank those of you who visited our churches yesterday to receive the imposition of ashes and to begin the Lenten season um, in a sense of prayer with penitence. It is, for me, it was indeed a blessing to be able to participate with you all in those services yesterday. There is a new lineup of services um, that in addition to the ones we will be having, and I will have that lineup prepared for sharing with you tomorrow morning. Of course, we know it includes um, beginning this evening, Thursday evening Bible studies mm -hmm. led by Bishop Wright. Um, and those begin, I believe, at 7.30. So Thursday evening Bible study, this evening, 7.30 on our Facebook page. Um, of course, broadcasting out of all of our Facebook pages here in the Anglican Diocese of Belize. And then on Friday, instead of prayer and praise party, we will have Stations of the Cross. And leading the stations for us this week is the Parish of Christ the King. So we will have readers from um, most of our mission churches as well as the parish church. And next week, we will be having readers for Stations of the Cross from a different church so that we could get the entire diocese involved with the Stations of the Cross. And those will begin at um, 5.30 p.m. on Friday. So please be on the lookout for um, our lineup of additional services for Lent. And of course, um, whatever Lenten activities your individual churches might be doing, please send me a message that we could share this information as well. We're going to conclude this morning then with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace and our final hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve our persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to close off this morning with the hymn entitled, a mighty fortress is our God. I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful Thursday that you do all in your um, ability to keep yourself and your family safe. Until tomorrow, same place, same time. God bless and bye for now. <music>